How's it going everyone? I'm Sir James coming at you guys with another lightsaber video and this time we're going to be visiting the Qui-Gon Jinn lightsaber. A lightsaber that is very classic, awesome looking that many of us come to love and some of you might have even had it as your first lightsaber as a kid from the you know the OG toy line and things like that. Now, at least it was for me. So um, this one here is made by TXQ as far as the maker of the hilt. However, in terms of the company which I obtained this hilt from was through the CX Sabers, which I'll put a link in the video description down below for you guys to check out. If you do pick up anything on their site, I highly recommend you pay attention to any of the coupon deals that they might have going on. Like for example, prior to me filming this review, they were offering like 30% off of anything on their site. And what was great about it is that there was no like string attached or obligations because you know sometimes websites will be like oh you can get 20% off if you spend $40 or more but here it was like you just get a flat 30% off using the coupon you didn't have to spend x amount which is great I like coupon deals like that my personal opinion. So one of the reasons why I like to revisit the Qui-Gon Jinn lightsaber because you may recall that I've done one through Ultimate Works and also done one that Disney has put out from their Legacy lightsaber line. Uh, well the reason why I like to revisit the Qui-Gon Jinn lightsaber through different companies is because I'm always curious how the installation is done due to the unique design of this helm. And you might be wondering, well, what do you mean? Well, because unlike most other sabers where you have a lot more room in, internally to do whatever it is that you want for the install, Qui-Gon Jinn saber is a bit differently just because of the bottom half. And what I mean by that is, well, it's best to show you guys as we take a closer look. So before that, let's go ahead and start with the upper emitter. This will use a one inch blade and there's a total of three retention screws in which this will use to secure the blade. Um, this is also a one button setup if you're curious and yes the red button is well the button there's no secondary hidden button or anything like that just so you are aware and this is what I mean about I'm always curious how the installs are done on this is because of this section right here as you can see you have all these slits down here which almost go all the way through but obviously you need room for the electronics which is like a little hidden crevice right here and normally in a lot of the sabers to access the chassis you would normally unscrew the pommel section to do so however obviously on this design that's not a possibility because there's no chassis that's going to fit down here uh, that's because if you unscrew this section here if you were curious is obviously going to be the speaker ventilation well it's a speaker ventilation and that's where the speaker is housed so the good question here is, well, how do you access the internals? Now this is a profi version that I am reviewing. And if you needed access to the internals, you're actually gonna be unscrewing this top section right here, just above the red button, like so. And this is why I'm really digging this design. In fact, it's probably one of my favorite Qui-Gon Jinn Sabres to date. So like I said, that slides right off, revealing the chassis underneath. And yes, even on this, the chassis is still 100% removable, which is nice. So this is like the unique way it attaches on the inside, so it's only going to fit one way. You do have access to your board. In my case, this is Profi. On the other side, you still have your removable battery. And I was actually surprised that they were still able to manage to squeeze in the USB-C charging port, which is great. And of course you have your pins on top where the blade will connect to. Now obviously the important thing if you're unfamiliar with custom sabers and whatnot and these kind of chassis, um, it's definitely best not to touch those pins because you don't want to short circuit or ruin them, bend them or anything like that. So always use caution with that in mind. And like I said, this is only going to fit in one way. There's no other way that this is going to fit in. Once you get the pieces lined up, push down. Um, you might feel a little, uh, you might hear a little connection point or not. And then of course you secure the two points together. And just like that, you are now good to go. And this thing is just awesome looking. I, I really like how that chassis system works for this, which is why I like to visit this hill. Again, as you can probably tell here from the lighting, this is definitely flat on the top, as you would expect, with the rounded edges and cut all the way through. And it's just really cool. There's something about Qui-Gon Jinn's lightsabers. 
it's very unique. My very first lightsaber that I've ever had growing up was a Qui-Gon Jinn's lightsaber. You know, back going to Toys R Us and getting the plastic one where you push down on the button and extend the blade. Ah, that feeling just never gets old. So which leads me to ask you guys a question before we fire this up is uh, what was your first lightsaber as a kid growing up? <laughs> Let me know. So if you're curious in terms of blade depth, um, it doesn't sit in very deeply if you were curious. So my thumb is at the very top of this and that's how much blade sits in. So it's not very deep whatsoever. And like I said, there is three retention screws. I don't know why they didn't go with a fourth one in my opinion, um, but it is just a total of three. I feel like four would have been good so you can secure the uh, blade on the two sides and then secure it on the other two sides. But uh, I don't know, that's just my personal opinion. I don't make the hilt so I don't know what business decisions go on. And obviously if you are probably looking in like, is this guy sweating already? Yes, it is summertime. It's the worst time of the year for me to ever record videos on this channel, but I do it for you guys to enjoy nonetheless. But now that we got the blade fully secured, which by the way, if you are curious, yes, if you do buy this, it comes with the whole shebang. You know, you get your blade, helps, everything that you need to, of course, tighten with the retention screws and whatnot. So you're all good to go out of the box. So without further ado, let's go ahead and turn this light off and fire this up. Right now it's currently on the dark saber font. It does also come with gesture controls pre-included out of the box. So if you were curious if it had that, yes, it does. If it didn't, then of course you'll be able to program that through Profi, which is a little bit of a learning process if you're not familiar with how to do that already. Um, so right now this is pretty much pre-installed with the default TXQ Saber fonts. Nothing too crazy. You've already heard these things a million times by now. Um, I do have some new Saber fonts that I can't wait to share with you guys, uh, which I'm hoping to include in the next review or two from now. One of which or two of which will go towards themes for the particular health that I'll be reviewing just so you guys are aware. Let's go ahead and cycle through these and test it out. So here we got blue Kel Kestis. And overall, this does feel good in the hands. And as far as the button goes, um, you know, I'm not really worried about like the button falling off or anything crazy like that. It still feels solid enough and I don't feel like the button is going to get in the way whatsoever. And then of course, no, oh, that one's still blue. Let's see. There we go. Training? No. Always training the universe. Nice green one right there. Give you guys a better look at it. Maybe from this angle, maybe the lighting will be a little better. Very cool, nonetheless. And of course you got your clashing effects, lock up, and because it is a one, yes I know I'm doing my best, now because this is a one button setup, which means that of course you're going to have to go through the process of learning how to activate certain things with the one button setup. For me, I'm always more of a fan of a two button setup due to the fact that with two buttons, it's a lot easier to access things. With one button, you have to remember, okay, what angle do I hold the blade? Uh, how long do I press this? And things like that. It's a little bit more of an annoyance, but you know, it, it is what it is. I'm glad it's still one button setup. I wouldn't mind personally if it was a two button setup because I feel like they could have done like a little hidden black button on this backside right here, um, especially with uh, the design to it. 
I felt like one could have easily been hidden back there if they wanted to do a two button setup, in my opinion. And of course, you also still have your cover tech wheel, so this will work with any of your cover tech wheel uh, holsters, even the ones from Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, uh, which is good on that one. I'm the one you're after. Bring your army. I'm ready. Let's see here. I will stop you. So holding it upwards, pressing the button, and twisting will activate any form of force, force effects and or quotes like... Master Yoda, are you alright? Oh my, what about people? And let's see, holding it downward will allow me to go into the color cycle mode. I'm surprised I actually remembered how to do that. <laughs> uh, so let's go ahead and do... let's see... like a goldish yellow. There you go. So when you hold it downward, you press the button and twist, it will go into the color mode. Once you find a color that you want by twisting the saber to the desired color, press and hold the button till you hear a noise again and it will lock to that color and you are now good to go. You did your best. <laughs> Imagine if Qui-Gon Jinn went to the dark side. Actually, I like the fact that um, with Qui-Gon Jinn's character, it ties into uh, how Dooku ended up going, you know, from leaving the Jedi Order. I don't know if any of you have ever watched the Star Wars, the Tell of a Jedi or Tell of a Sith type thing. Uh, definitely worth checking those out. They're on Disney+, Plus, not a sponsor or anything like that. But worth checking out, you get some nice backstory, especially with uh, Count Dooku and things like that. Some really neat things. And we'll go through a couple more. Let's see. This one's an oldie but a classic for me because I really love this particular saber font, especially with the effect for pod racing. Again, upward. <laughs> Let's see. That one never gets old. Let's see. We'll do this one as the last one. Pretty much some kind of energy based blade. I mean, obviously, laser sword. <laughs> I like that. It's a little soothing, relaxing. Actually, you know, I'm kind of curious. If you guys were to ever like go exploring in a cave, and you've you, and if while exploring you ended up hearing this sound in the distance. What would your reaction be? <laughs> and boom, off right there. Go ahead and turn this back on. So yeah, I mean, to be honest, I don't really have any complaints for this. This is a very well done Qui-Gon Jinn lightsaber, in my humble opinion. And I really like how they designed the chassis to make this work for it. Because again, you don't have that space here on the bottom for a chassis just because of the design of the pommel section of the hilt but the fact that they made it work towards the top and they didn't really sacrifice anything in terms of the look and the design um, it just again it looks amazing it feels great it feels perfect and honestly this is a great one to have nonetheless but what do you guys think of Qui-Gon Jinn's lightsaber let me know in the comment section down below. Like I said, if you want this help, I have a link to the website itself. Definitely check out their coupon deals that they're offering as well. And like I said, this one is definitely worthy of adding to one's collection, especially if you're collecting the, all the classic cuts. I mean, to be honest, trying to get a lightsaber collection specifically for Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace is definitely a lot easier than 
trying to collect all the helts from Clone Wars or Ahsoka or any of the other Star Wars shows because, you know, the Phantom Menace, it's specifically, what, three lightsabers total? You have Qui-Gon Jinn's, Obi-Wan, and Darth Maul. So just three helts to collect and then you've collected them all. Uh, episode two, I feel like is a lot more because then you got the whole, you know, the arena scene and then of course the Revenge of the Sith. But uh, like I said, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. I still have quite a few other helps. I got a couple um, other ones. Well, right now I have one from Star Wars, the Acolyte. There's another one coming, which I'm excited to check out in regards to the stranger. Uh, I got a Luke over here. I got a really uh, cool one coming through Ultimate Works, which is an add-on to the Cal Kestis Cross Guard Saber as well. So a lot of great ones to check out nonetheless. But like I said, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below. I've probably said that like three times already. But nonetheless, you guys have a wonderful week. And always remember, may the Force be with you.